Okay, in this case, we are given the graph of a derivative. And it's defined up here, but sometimes it's tough to read this. All right, we have a of x is defined to be the definite integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. And the graph of f of x is given right here. All right, so that's important that they gave us the graph of the derivative. All right, f of x's graph is given, not a of x. But they're going to ask us questions about a of x. All right, when is that going to have a, ma a local maximum or a local minimum? So they're asking us about a of x, not f of x. All right, this is where everyone makes their mistakes. So remember, the derivative is what we have here, the, the graph of the derivative of a of x. So remember that the area underneath the curve is going to be uh, positive, and it's going to be increasing a of x if it's above the x-axis. So this graph is going to increase until we get to the x-axis at 1. All right, so a of x is increasing until an x value of 1. And then what happens in the next part? Well, we're below the x-axis, so all the area here is going to be below the x-axis. It's going to be taken away from a of x. That happens until it looks like an x value of 3. We're back to increasing on this side, right above the x-axis for the derivative until we get to 5. So we get another local maximum at 5. And then continuing on the rest of this, it, we can't actually find the next minimum exactly where it's going to be. It does continue decreasing as we go along here. But since we didn't get back to the x-axis, we just kind of ran out of graph. All right, so I'm not going to list another value for uh, a local minimum. But that's the idea. Notice we did not play around with the maximums or minimums along the way here. That was not the point of this. That's if you were given the graph of the original function, a of x, you'd be looking for the highest and lowest points on the graph. But that's not what the derivative tells us about a of x. So hope this helps out. Shouldn't be too bad.